they left to shout together to him, Praise the Lord! We have to be extra loud today because there's fewer of us. You won't hear. Yeah. He hears it all. Prayer warriors, we've got a long list there. You know, we have Carmen and, and uh, we have Nancy with uh, cancer treatment. And uh, they need to be held constantly on their prayer list permanently. And uh, both Dorothy and Dave Horn are experiencing uh, health issues. And we miss them very much. And we want them to get well and get back to sharing with us. Linda is still recovering from knee surgery and uh, Karen, of course, from her neck surgery. And we need prayer for our church family. We have some challenges that we are facing at this time. And uh, pray for the church. And who is that? Us. Yeah, that's us. Okay. That's us. All of us together. We are the church. Pray for that church. There are some flyers by the door. They're little plastic bags that you can hang on a doorknob. Um, these flyers, one of them is to uh, let people know that we're here. So after you've had a look at it, maybe you might know a neighbor or a friend or, or someone you might want to share it with. Or maybe somebody you've never heard before. That's why you have a little plastic bag. You can just hang it on your doorknob. And maybe encourage someone new to come and join our fellowship. The other flyer in there is to remind us of our Friday night sing, which is coming up beginning in uh, December, December 8th and December 15th on Friday night. Uh, we're going to sing the old time Christmas carols. And uh, then, of course, as we, we get on into January, we're going to try to do it Friday nights in January as well. And we're going to sing from the hymnal because we love those old songs that tell us so much about our Christ Jesus. So um, plan to join us if you can, and uh, those flyers will give you some information. If you haven't already got one, please be sure to take one. Let me by the door. Um, I think I've covered it. Randy. Pray for a she's traveling this Yes, thank you very much, Randy. Yes, Betsy is traveling. She's going to be traveling to truck. Mm -hmm. and, with her sister. Mm -hmm. With her sister. With her sister. And uh, I don't know if you know where truck is. It's a memorial for a nephew that passed. Memorial for? A nephew that passed. Okay. For a nephew that has passed. And she's going there for a memorial. Uh, just for the fun of it, if they have a map at home, you might look it up and get an idea of where that little island is. And uh, that will then help you a little bit with your prayer because you have a little bit of something to relate to. So please remember Retsy in your prayer. Amen. Chapter 2, 2 
Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 15. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. For we die, if we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he, will, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord, not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You may be seated. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. Yes, you're out there. Okay, there you are. I see you. Okay. I might get you guys exercised and move you all to the front because there's not very many. And uh, who knows? We'll see. We'll see how you guys do. I might stand up in about the third row. We'll check. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to start with number 190 in our hymn, hymn book. I love to tell the story. I love to tell the story.
Liz a few seconds to run up there. Um, ushers, ushers. Ah.
if this is my last words, I'm not going to waste them on something that's not important. And so when you read through 2 Timothy, kind of look at it from the standpoint of that, and again, look at it from that standpoint as well as what he's saying, but what he's not talking about. And if he was writing it today, what, he would, what would he not write about if you look at what he's writing here? I'll give you one. <laughs> he's not writing about politics. He's not writing about a lot of things that are so up and so uh, in our face all the time, every day, every day. He's not writing about any of those things, which is kind of kind of why you think like, well, you would think he would be uh, writing about uh, this uh, activity and that activity and who's president, who's not, and oh, you should start this thing, you should, oh my gosh. What's his word? What does he say? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ, Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, uh, serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desire to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. Where's Paul? He's in prison, and not a very nice prison at that. This time he's not under house arrest. He's in a dungeon someplace. Prison, prison. And that in the Roman Empire, that was not a good place to be. Uh, if somebody didn't come by and take care of you, it was not a good thing. There was no advocacy groups there to make sure that you had TV and that you had three meals a day and all those other things. There wasn't any of that. And he's writing this letter to a, a dear friend of his. Uh, a friend he had, had uh, ran into on his first missionary journey. He ran into this, this young man, uh, Timothy, ran into him. And he had, he had a grandmother and a mother who were uh, Eunice and, uh, let's see, my grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. And um, the peculiar thing about though, even though uh, Timothy was raised in a Greek home, his mother and grandmother were Jewish. Imagine that. They were faithful Jewish women, even though they lived far away from where uh, Israel was far in the, in, in the time. Today it would be that far, you know, a couple few hours hours of driving we would be to, to Lister of Derby, but in, in those days it was a little bit farther away. And on Paul's first missionary journey he met this young man uh, with a Jewish background. And um, he is very thankful and he would love to see Timothy before he goes. He knows he's going. He has a very short time. And he wants to see this young man. When I, call when I call remembrance of genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first with your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded it is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. Do you ever get the days, some of the days where you just kind of like, you know what? It's not worth it. I'm tired. I want to just, I think, I wish things would just, you know, the world would just go on by and leave me alone. I would just like to be nice and quiet. Don't bother me anymore. It's kind of like a campfire, you know how campfires are. Um, you, <laughs> most of the time we like the campfire to stay up. But just, just think of it as a campfire, you put all the stuff in it, and then as time goes on, what happens to it? It goes out. Why? Yeah. Yeah. It burns out. All the, all the, all the fuel is gone. So what do we do? 
Sorry, I'm a Romer, David. I'm sorry. <laughs> what do we do? We add more. We add more fuel. What happens if we don't? It goes out. It goes out. That's an admonition. Well, that's a big word. Admonition to us. Okay? The fire can go out. That's what it sounds like. Nothing. It just kind of goes out, and there's a last little, last little ember. There's just a little bit of smoke that goes out, and it's out. And each one of us is just like that little fire. And some days it feels like that. All the fuel is gone. It's all gone. I don't have any more. I don't want to do this. Anymore. That's not what we're here for. That's not why we're here. That's not why God gave us the spirit of, not the spirit of fear. What does it say here? For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. That's what he gave us. That's what we're supposed to have. Um, I was thinking about this. Uh, a couple of people uh, I was talking to, they don't, from all I can tell, they don't know Christ. They don't know God. Thank you. A little more light there. Um, they don't have anything to, to rely on. They have no fire in the first place. They don't even have a fire. They don't have any kindling at all. Their fire was dead before they even started. And to listen to them and how they talk about their life and what's going on in their world, it's sad. It's just sad to listen to them and how they exist in the world and without Christ. No fire at all. It's just, it's just a weight on them. Uh, they've had this thing happen to them and this thing happen to them, and they're even using drugs or alcohol or whatever to, to kind of dull the pain. No fire at all. Nothing. And that's the best... That's the best the world can do. That's it. Remember the old song, Is That All There Is? If that's all there is. But it isn't. That isn't all there is. You know, it's kind of like, you want to reach through there and, and yank on them. Because, you know, it's, it's just kind of like, you, you see the sadness in their, in, their, in their life. And they have no hope. They just exist. And it's just, that's not where we're at. That's not what we're supposed to do. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift which is in you through the laying on of him. No one laid any hands on any of us that I, can, that I know of. Uh, you know, here he was talking to um, Timothy about they, he, you know, he was ordained and they, they you know, did all the, the things that you do. He ordained them, they lay hands on him and you know, sent him on, on the mission and, and as, as an astronaut. Uh, anybody had anybody here had their hands? Somebody lay their hands on them and give them permission. Confirmation. Well, come. No, I mean, yeah. And so I kind of like, but we all have a gift. We all have something that God wants us to do. Every last one of us. We all have a mission. And I don't care how old you are or how young. No. Okay, we're just talking to us older people today. So this, this is reality. God isn't done with us yet. Yeah. Yeah, there's nobody younger than here today. Yeah. God isn't... Oh! Hi, Elizabeth. Sorry about that. You're up there, though. You're up above us. <laughs> in reality, it's, well, well, I want to be retired. There's no retirement in Christianity. You're not retired. I hate to tell you that. There is no retirement. You don't just get to quit. Well, you could, I suppose. You can let the fire go out. And you can be that little camp, campfire someplace out there in nowhere and just let the fire go out. That's sad. And yet that's where many Christians are. They let the fire go out. God has given us not the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Therefore, 
This is what's important to Paul. This is what he okay? He says, okay, since he's given us, what's important? What should we be doing? What should you be doing, Timothy? What's on his mind? What should you be doing to further your career and everything else? What should you be doing? What do you think he says? What about joining the Rotary? Or joining, yeah, yeah, some, some business group, or maybe we should do some uh, uh, an outreach. Uh, and, oh, I know, we'll, we'll, we'll feed the hungry and feed the poor, and we'll do all those things, and not that they're bad things. But that's not what he said, that's not what is important to him. He said, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, or, or me, his prisoner, but share with, uh, share with me in the sufferings for the gospel. I remember somebody yesterday asked me about the gospel. <laughs> we were in uh, the men's group here, and we had, what is the gospel? What is the, what is the good news according to the power of God? What is the good news? Somebody tell me. What's the good news? Come on! <laughs> What's the good news? Yeah. Yeah. Wake up. That's what the good news is. The good news, Jesus Christ went to the cross, died for his sins, and what, we're not under the law. Wow. Good news. Are you excited? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, where's the uh, Mike? Mike? What are we supposed to say? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, he shut me off. Nice. <laughs> yeah. What? That's what. That's what our big job is. You say, well, I don't know. I'm not this and that. That's. That's what we're here for. How do we how do we show the, this is this little bit? How do we show the gospel to somebody else who is dying? How do we, anything in the sense of spiritually dying? How do we show the gospel to them? Okay. What does it look like? How can you have joy in your life 
with all the garbage that's going on. How in the world can you be happy? Yeah. Yeah, he lives. And therefore? We have what? Yes, we have tomorrow. I don't know who holds tomorrow, but... I know who holds my hand. That's right. We don't need to know about tomorrow. Why not? We have 
have the key to eternal life. And we can give it to somebody, and we still have it. The gift that keeps on giving. And you can give it away as much as you want, and as many times as you want, and you will still have more to give. I sang that one song. I love to tell the story. Yeah. Why? Because it's true. It's true. That's why. It's true. We love to tell the story because we know it's true. We see it. We live it. We look at it. And we see the dying world. And they are without it. And they are without it. And we have what they want. Unfortunately, most of them don't want it. Which is unbelievable almost. That's almost one more unbelievable than that people not believing is they don't want it. And why don't they want it? You have 
that effect on other people's lives and you have no idea about it. There are people that you do know and there are people that you don't know because you don't know exactly how those ripples will play out. And then, see all these people here? We're all little pebbles. Everyone's going to take a whole handful of pebbles and chuck them out into a, into a pond. What happens? A bunch of ripples, yeah. All of a sudden the water was got a bunch of ripples all going all over the place. They interact with each other, and they go back and forth, and some are little ones and big ones and whatever. You're, you're a ripple maker. <laughs> I hope thanks. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but share with me in the suffering of the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, with a holy calling, not according to our works. Thank you. Could you imagine if it was dependent on us, how, how, how God worked and worked through us? He looks at you like, oh man, I can do better. <laughs> In fact, oh yeah, I can do better. Ooh, no problem there. He doesn't do that. He doesn't give us seconds. Hand-me-downs. Oh, <laughs> you don't get hand-me-downs. Right off the top. Who has saved us and called us with his holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus. When? When did he give us everything that he had planned to do? When we believe. Huh? When we believe. Ah. Uh, no, no, no. When did he give it to us? What does it say? Second Timothy 1, verse 9. When did he give us these things? We've got it. I'm not going to give it to you. Four times each. Ah. Before the world even began, before it even existed. Think about that. Before it even existed. Before the universe existed. The universe. Before it even existed, he had already all this planned out. Okay, I'll read verse 10. But now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to life. How? Through the gospel. And who gets the gospel? We do. We have something that is immeasurable. We have this gift. It's called the gospel. It's our job to give out the gospel. The good news that Jesus Christ is the Savior. That when you accept his, his uh, son and what he did on the cross, you will be with him forever and ever and ever. And this is a part that really kind of blows my mind. If you don't accept Christ, you will not be with him forever. Think about that for a second. Not be with him forever. Yeah. That's what they're that's where they're going. If they don't accept Christ as their Savior, they are going to be without Christ in darkness, separated from God, separated from life, love, joy, happiness, all those things that we we look and we think about it, it is wonderful. They will not be there. That's, that is terrible. Absolutely terrible. It seems that we believe that we all be out there rushing to our neighbors, relatives. Yes. And, and, and unfortunately, many of them will not like it and would not accept it anyway. And that's even the worst part, maybe, is that uh, many have heard 
Many have heard the truth. Many have heard about the light. And they don't want it. They reject it because they don't like it. Because it shows them for what they are. I'm a sinner. You, what? I'm a good person. What do I need a Savior for? How dare you tell me that, you know, that I need a Savior? That I need you know, some that, you know, like, oh, God. All these things that people say. How dare you? I don't need God. I don't need Him. I've heard this before. They're on the way to a place in a, in a future that is un unimaginable. You can't even imagine that. Think about that. What would it be like to no light, no love, no joy, no happiness ever again? I can't even imagine it. I, I mean, that's just beyond our ability to to fathom what that, how dark and how hopeless that would be. Just hopeless. Never, ever, ever, ever seeing happiness or joy again. For this reason I suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, or believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. That's our assurance. Are you persuaded? Uh, <laughs> yes, I am persuaded. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit working in our lives, because we believe what the Scriptures say. That's why Paul is so assured and is so self-confident and persuaded that God is able to keep what he has started. He says, uh, you're in my hand. Absolutely, you're in his hand. You cannot get, there is nothing that you can do, anything, there is nothing in this whole universe that can take you out of God's hand once you're there. Nothing. Be persuaded. Be confident. Be resolved. Light the fire. Get the, get the old bellows going over. Get it nice and hot. Don't let it go out. There's nothing worse than a sad Christian who's given up. Let the fire go out. Just, you know, that is one of the saddest things you're going to find. The Christian who's just given up. Very sad. Okay, well that's my that's my big thing for today. Um, that's the challenge. Keep the fire going. Get it hot. Very very hot. Okay, right, let's close with a word for it, and then we'll sing our last song. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who went to the cross for us, who died for us, and was able to take away the, the barrier between you and us. And we are very thankful that we are part of your plan, that we are a, uh, uh, not just pawns, but we are conscious, and we are, can participate in your plan by giving out the gospel to those who are lost and who are dying and who are on their way to a, a very, very terrible place. We ask that you would give us opportunities to bring this, the gospel to those who are without, and that we would have a joy in our hearts, that we would uh, not hold, it, hold it the gospel to ourselves, but also just to give it away, freely give it away, and uh, shower the world with, with the good news that Jesus Christ is the Savior. We ask this thing in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the last song is Revive Us Again. Number 44. <coughs> Revive Us Again. Another happy song. I like this one. A lot of hallelujahs in here, so I really want to hear the hallelujahs out there. Love <laughs>